this is Ellie coming to you from Australia, also known as The Future. Hello to everyone who's seeing me for the first time and hello and welcome back to all of my wonderful subscribers. We are almost in November and I am this week going to do a reading on what to expect in the month of November. One of the things that's going to happen though is the testimonies have been compelled for Don Jr., Eric, Ivanka and then Donald and they're all happening in that first week of November this week. So I think today I'm going to do a reading on the Trump testimonies and then see if we need to put some extra cards down on any of these particular individuals. I'll put some extra cards down. I'm uh, now this are these are testimonies that have been compelled against their will in the New York um, fraud trial relating to the Trump organization. So um, this is going to be really interesting stuff. Unfortunately, cameras are not allowed in this courtroom. I believe that um, Michael Cohen has testified in this trial. He actually might end up in the audience of the trial. I don't know. Uh, so he may be given access to the courtroom, which means that it'd be worthwhile listening to what he has to say, whether it's on the Mia Culpa podcast or he also um, is working with uh, Midas Touch now as well. And I'm pretty sure he'll be pretty forthright about the things that have happened in the testimony if he's been there. However, there are other reporters who are in the courtroom as well. So we'll be hearing little bits here and there. I just thought it might be an idea for us to do a reading before these testimonies start to see what the cards have to say. I believe that it goes in this order. On the second, it's Don Jr. On the third, it's Eric. On the fourth, it's Ivanka. And then Monday, I think is the sixth, and that is um, Donald. So I'll do that reading today, and we'll also see if they come up in the monthly reading, which I'm going to do later in the week. However, before I begin, I just wanted to update you on a few things. Firstly, if you wanted to become a patron, now it's more affordable uh, from $3 something a month and that gives you access to uh, videos um, ad free and also so if you join as an Ellie patron you get all of the Ellie videos ad free um, if you join as a Universe Always Wins patron you get all of the Universe Always Wins videos ad free and then there's an option that's even more and also all patrons get to participate in the chat rooms including the suggest a reading chat room which is a new chat room that I've created that allows you to kind of get be first in line kind of thing to suggest the readings that you'd like me to do either full or in blitzes so consider that if you are getting sick of all the advertising because I know some of you are I've deliberately put in some really affordable tiers so that it's much cheaper um, than having to get like a YouTube ad free thing or any other option so that's one thing and another thing is my post office box uh, was recently reopened uh, a different post office box uh, I wasn't able to put the other one on hold <laughs> and I got my first little something and I wanted to show it to you it's from Rob and it's a book that Rob wrote and I haven't read it I only just picked it up from the PO box this weekend but I have an honorable mention in here on page I think it's 138 page 138 it says Ellie dreams done under so thank you so much Rob I'm going to read something from the back of the book as you can see I haven't started reading it yet but I will but what I did notice is Rob also does artwork hang on look artwork as well this book is called life is magic and then um, part one listen to the universe but I like the very first paragraph of what appears at the back let me read this to you it says Life is magic. The universe is a living, breathing contradiction because the existence of an external creator who always is, was and will be is impossible. A paradox. Just as the idea that the universe burst into existence all on its own with no agent to set it in motion is impossible. Therefore, life is inherently contradictory and absurd and already supernatural. In short, life is magic. And I just thought it rings really true and it's just a really lovely way for me to be introduced to this book. So thank you, Rob. I'm definitely going to read this and um, I'm going to definitely need my glasses though 
because it's got some itty bitty little writing in it. <laughs> and I guess I'll probably have to get better glasses than um, the ones that I think I bought at a petrol station for $10. Anyway, they're doing the job for now when I need them and I know exactly where they are. They're right here and I hardly ever wear them, but I'm probably going to have to wear them to read your book. But thank you so much. Anyway, on to the reading. So let's take a look. I'm going to do a full reading on the Trump testimonies and then let's just see what comes out of it. OK, so it's Don Jr., Eric and Ivanka that are testifying in that order on the 2nd, the 3rd and the 4th of November. Then there's a day break and then Donald is testifying on the 6th. Ivanka tried really hard to get out of her testimony and she said, you know, she's not with the Trump org anymore and the statute of limitations has expired and then she's out of area and there's no jurisdiction and blah, blah, blah. Um, but the judge has since said that's nonsense and has compelled her to testify. So it'd be interesting to see what she has to say. She seems to, she seems to want to protect her image and distance herself from the rest of the family, but also she's not going to want to um, betray them too much either because she is still a Trump and any dirt on them will reflect on her. But um, she's been compelled. Don Jr. and Eric really would not have been able to get out of it because they are executives of the Trump organization and um, had continued to be so right throughout Donald's presidency. So they've been compelled. And then, of course, Donald is the patriarch and the ultimate boss of the organization. And he's going to be testifying as well. It's going to be a big mess, a big hot mess. Let's just see what the cards say. No, I'm going to cut the cards. Okay. I wasn't sure there for a moment, but yes, I am. So we have the signifier. And the challenge card. Hmm. Conscious thoughts. Subconscious thoughts. The past. And then the short term, I think short term is appropriate for this card because it does take us forward into something. OK, so the signifier is the four of wands in reverse and it's challenged by the four of swords in reverse. You see, they're both. Four, I nearly nearly put up three, three fingers. They're both four cards. You can't see that four cards. There you go. And so they kind of have equal weight. The Four of Wands in Reverse is about laying a foundation for something and um, and also building relationships or strong relationships. This is uh, the laying of a foundation for something is probably most relevant. However, we'll, we'll keep both of those defini definitions in mind. The challenge here is the Four of Swords in reverse, and this is about self-neglect, insomnia, strange dreams, and um, and also isolation as well. I think I think the baseline is demonstrating that there is a big challenge, you know, because it's a four and a four. The signifier and the baseline are both fours. And so they're really fighting against each other. And the challenge is overwhelming because to lay a foundation and maintain your relationships or to foster strong relationships, it could be relating to family because, you know, this four of wands is community celebration, doing a, a job well done as well. But you'll see that the people in the distance there are gathering probably to celebrate a successful harvest or something like that. It could be a wedding. And so um, there's also the element of um, domestic comfort and bliss. 
this could be very much about the bliss and comfort of having this um this organization that's almost like a little family community where everyone chips in and does their bit and then they celebrate their successes except it's upside down it doesn't mean that it's not a po still a positive kind of exercise but there's the issue of the relationships in there that i think are relevant and being able to maintain those relationships and then the laying of a foundation for something we'll have to tease it out from the cards and see if it's relevant and also what it might be relevant to however it's entirely being challenged quite strongly by an equal, a card of equal weight and this would indicate the isolation element could very well directly relate to the relationship element. This could be, and it has a question of, um, you know, the strange dreams can be almost warnings, uh, predictive. They could be anxiety related. Uh, the self neglect could be a warning. It's either you or me, you know, the dog eat dog kind of element that could be interfering with the relationship. And the isolation could be about stepping over your family member to separate yourself from them. So Ivanka, for example, has done her best to separate herself from the rest of the family. And so she would fall very much under this category. This is a more harmonious type of community effort where they're all working together. This would indicate that they can't really trust each other. And so that is the baseline for the reading. So we know it's going to be a really interesting week. I don't think that any of these people are going to actively pursue some kind of answers to questions that are deliberately trying to hurt other people. But they're going to be no match for the, the questions from the government. There, this, is not a, this is not a congressional committee. This is not... A fluff piece you know for a magazine like OK magazine or something this is not a Fox News interview these are um, prosecutors and you can't hide you either answer the question or you purge yourself or you plead the fifth or whatever it is that you do but um, it's not going to be easy to navigate and so I think they're all going to be struggling and it's going to reflect in the relationships that they have with each other so on the conscious level, we've got the Page of Cups in reverse. This is about um, having an identity crisis. There's the gender confusion card, um, the gender confusion element of the definition. We also have the arrival of a message, but it's generally an upsetting message as well. And you'll see it comes from the, the, uh, the cup suite, which is all about emotions and sense of self. The identity crisis element is about feeling like an outsider in the world. There's an isolation element here and then this outsider element. This is about um, communication intellect. So this would this would be about a psychological separation that's out of necessity. It's generally not a willing psychological separation when the card is in reverse. It could be when the card is upright. This could be just about going hiding away and resting the mind and giving yourself a bit of a break. But this is almost like being in isolation and um, and being in a position that is harsher. OK, this here coincides with that challenge. This is about losing your identity or being uncertain of your identity. Now, if you are struggling between these two cards, your identity will be in question. Are you a Trump or are you in it for yourself? Are you going to toe the party line, the family line, or are you going to try and keep your head above water by scrambling on top of everyone else? It's kind of, you know, family versus um, self-protection. And it doesn't matter how dysfunctional the family is, family still will pull when it comes to these people. It doesn't matter how dysfunctional, how much they bicker behind closed doors, they will still kind of try and stick together as a group except they can't because they will all go down together if they do that so this is going to be really, really interesting and that's where the identity element comes in and the upsetting message is probably based on the emotions around that but also we have another clue 
and that is the five of pentacles that's this sits in the subconscious and this is more in terms of the base of not the baseline but the basis of the reading and one of the fundamental elements that underpin it it's about basically being destitute losing your livelihood um, having illness or poverty and not being able to get out of it not being able to avoid the um the crisis that is related to your prosperity and well-being well this trump organization sort of landslide that's taking place um is probably you know 99 percent likely to dissolve the trump organization make it impossible for anyone to operate in new york ever again and just diminish you know the trump name name goes up in flames or travel down the toilet or you know and um, you've basically lost everything in terms of reputationally um, there'll be fines imposed there's also going to be an inability to operate um, in certain parts of the country unable uh, inability to form um, a company in your name and, and things like that or to own a company of any kind in certain parts of the country and things like that but also reputationally um, being unable to to borrow money or to do business with with important people um, and things like that so there is a big um, risk here of losing your prosperity your well-being reputational and not being able to find your way out now you can see here that we've got all four suites we've got the action inspiration here we've got the communication intellect we've got um, compassion emotion and sense of self and then we've got uh, prosperity and well-being this would indicate that everything in the early part of the reading is covered the trumps all four of them that are going to be testifying they are going to be feeling it from in every aspect of who they are it's con it would be consuming them at this point in the past we've got the queen of swords in reverse um, the Queen of Swords in reverse is a manipulative female energy. This is about um, basically doing shifty things and having no regard for the impact on others. There's more to it, but you know you can be really intolerant or racist or biased. You um, you manipulate others in order to get benefit for yourself. The information that you are yielding or that you're using to operate in that way is likely to be dishonest or misleading and um, you often don't work within the parameters of truth and fact that's in the past that sounds really familiar and that's one of the reasons why the trumps are in trouble when it comes to their business empire so the card is really fitting there in the short term we've got the two of wands this is about planning and decision making but there could be some delay as well and I don't know how to contextualize this yet so let's just keep going but it might relate to the laying of a foundation here let's keep going the way they see themselves the way that others see them or the environment in which they sit absolutely hopes and fears oh i think it might be a fear but anyway and then the final outcome which is fab okay not for not for them but for the rest of us uh, who are watching, yeah, not bad. So the way they see themselves is the two of pentacles in reverse. This is about um, sort of being overworked or overwhelmed, having learning difficulties, and also being unable to manage your uh, time and resources or, or not being able to make ends meet. Now, this is interesting. Not being able to make ends meet and, ha and having learning difficulties and feeling a bit overwhelmed I wouldn't be surprised if there's an outburst in one of the testimonies and I don't think Donald's testimony it could be I mean that's pretty predictable he lies all the time but this feeling overwhelmed and overworked thing it could be that one of the siblings I'm not going to say children because you know honestly we're talking aren't they in their 40s now <laughs> or something I don't know or somewhere in that vicinity I think Ivanka's 40 or something isn't she I don't know anyway but um, they're they're juggling a lot of things as individuals first of all 
they're not going to be able to make ends meet, which means there's going to be elements of testimony that don't, the, the dots are not joined. So there's, there's a lack of credibility there. Something isn't going to fit right. But also they're not going to be able to explain how decisions were made. You see this is a prosperity card as well. They're not going to be able to be able to adequately explain how things worked in the Trump organization so that it makes sense. And so that is quite damaging. But also it sits beneath this card of the identity crisis and the upsetting message. I think the testimony is going to be damaging for all of them. I don't think you need to be a tarot reader to know that. They really have no option but to scramble over each other, try and avoid answering, try to be vague in their responses and then get reprimanded on the spot while they're sitting there at the, on the stand. And all of this is going to affect their um, the outcome of the trial, but also it's going to affect their reputations as well. And um, their, the inability to learn from their mistakes is likely to be um, a clue that they're going to try and do what they've always done, but it's not going to really work in this particular instance. And the reason for that is the next card, which is the way they're viewed by others or the environment in which they sit. And that's the High Priestess in Reverse. The High Priestess in Reverse is about the revealing of secrets. It's also about emerging from depression or it can be a predatory card. I think that the revealing of secrets is relevant. It could be about the way they're viewed by others. It could also be a predatory card in terms of the environment in which they sit. They're going to be sitting in the witness stand with some aggressive uh, prosecutors um, who are actually um, not going to just let them fluff their way through the testimony. They're pursuing these individuals. And so they're actually going to be caught in a net where the truth is going to come out and the secrets are going to come out. You'll see it sits directly beneath this card of losing everything, of having this lack of um, affluence and prosperity and well-being because Letitia James, who is running this particular trial, is unrelenting. unrelenting. So she is the, um, she is the pursuer that is preying on them. And I don't mean it in an evil way. To be a predatory means you're being hunted. And so they are being hunted and they are at risk. So when you look at this dynamic here, firstly, the baseline shows that these each of these people are going to be struggling to be able to balance this family cohesion element, keeping out of trouble, maintaining their reputation, isolating themselves from the group in order to maintain their um, their own personal well-being, but also being loyal to the family. And um, this is a struggle that is going to be massive in each of them. That's what this appears to be here. This dynamic is about, so I've got this funny little hair that's just bothering me. <laughs> Let's put it somewhere else. Okay, so um, this is going to be about it's just, there's just no positive way for them to come out of this. Each of them is going to be damaged as a result of it because they are being very strongly pursued. They cannot escape. It's like they're in a cage and they can't get out. The only way they know how to do things is the way they've done them before. The answers are not going to make sense. So they're all going to come across as lacking credibility you probably will have an outburst from someone who can't cope with the pressure. I don't know which one, but we'll see if we can put some cards down to find out. And it's going to ultimately be upsetting. But one of the reasons why it's going to be upsetting is because it directly impacts their well-being and their prosperity as a family and also as individuals. And I don't think any of them are going to be exempt. So in hopes and fears, we've got the Ace of Swords. You know, OK, this would be a hope card for the prosecutors, but it's definitely a fear card for the Trumps, every single one of them. And you sit here, it sits here beneath the Queen of Swords. This is the ultimate card when it comes to the truth. It's a truth and justice card and it's a fear card. You'll see we have an ace and an ace. And what that indicates is that we um, there's going to be a very strong definitive outcome 
to this trial on the basis of these testimonies. So this Ace of Swords is a fear card. Each of the Trumps is guilty of the past and each of them is afraid of the truth. That's the ultimate fear. It's also the ultimate desire for the ones who are pursuing them. In the final outcome, we've got the Ace of Cups. And the Ace of Cups uh, in reverse. And the Ace of Cups in reverse is also an ultimate card. It's an ultimate card when it comes to your sense of self, um, this element of emotion, and also compassion. Um, and so you'll see that it's in reverse. This is about losing love, falling out of love, going from romance to routine. I think that there's going to be a lot of love lost in the Trump family. Chances are there's going to be grudges at the end of this that are going to be pretty tough. And I think what this card is about is about each of the individuals kind of going their own way. So you might find that in the testimonies, the the press or the witnesses who are there in the audience are going to come out and say things like each of them, you know, talking about their individual testimonies in the beginning, they were trying to show this cohesive group and and trying to be protected, but somehow it got scratched out of them. And then they suddenly started turning on the other and um, and trying to find their own way to find a solution. This is about they're probably at this point in time trying to strategize their overall plan of how they're going to testify, except it's not going to help them because they're being pursued by something they can't avoid. It's not like they're being pursued by the media where they just don't open the door and answer the phone. They can't get off the chair until they answer the question. And so they'll either have to be truthful or they'll have to lie. And it doesn't matter which of those they do, they're in trouble. So this is where it all starts to fall apart. And this um, falling out of love element or lack of love would indicate, and because it's an ultimate, it's a, it coincides with the hopes and fears, which are also an ultimate. This is going to be a devastating loss for the family individuals when it comes to their relationship between themselves their sense of self, which relates to their credibility. Um, and and I don't even think I need to put down more cards. But anyway, let me just put down quickly a single card for each of these testimonies. Ultimately, this appears to be the result of the testimonies. Let's look at these in order. So the first person, to, just one card. The first person testifying is on the second. That's Don Jr. He's got a big mouth. I'm glad that he's first. Let's just see how cocky he is when he's um, when he's talking to a prosecutor because he has a lot to say when he's just posting on Twitter. <laughs> little those little video shots that he does on Twitter where he generally looks all bleary eyed and high on something. Well, let's just see how he copes with a prosecutor. So just one card that represents his testimony. Okay, so we've got the sun in reverse. This is a mediocre success. And um, it's actually a good card because what it, it demonstrates, the sun is about exposure and enlightenment and success and happiness. The exposure is going to be mediocre, though, which is not negative because the sun never has a negative element to it. It's just slightly dimmed because he's the first in line. There's going to be a kind of a an enlightenment and an exposure of certain things, but it's not going to be overly. Um, I mean, I'm sure it'll be, you know, newsworthy. But it won't be as exciting as it might get later on in the week when everyone else is also testifying. But there is going to be some enlightenment. So that's Don Jr. So let's take a look at Eric. One card that sums up his testimony. So it looks as though it won't be explosive, Don Jr.'s testimony, but it will be really enlightening. Okay. Or it, there will be an element of exposure associated with it. 
And I think the prosecutors are going to be reasonably happy with his testimony as well. So let's have a look at Eric. Okay, so um, the Four of Cups in reverse. Remember, it's a Cups card. This is about um, looking for solutions, preparing for change, apathy here as well. Um, and then psychic experiences. So Eric, I think Eric is going to have more of a haunting element to it. And I actually think there may be some disagreement between Eric and Don Jr. on certain points. So it could be that Eric... It could be that Don Jr. provide he kind of points the finger a little bit at Eric, not realizing that he's put Eric in a corner. And then Eric has to turn the finger around the other way. Because this element of um, apathy and also the solutions, it's like a little scramble for solutions. It's almost like you've been put on the spot. And the preparing for change is like a turnaround. I actually think... There may also, with this psychic experience, like an intuitive response. There's something there. I wouldn't be surprised if Eric actually has a little moment, like an emotional moment. I don't mean crying. I mean something, he might be under pressure and something comes out that is emotive in nature, like a reflex response. But also he may re-point towards um, Don Jr. So there's going to be something in Eric's testimony that kind of demonstrates that oop, there's a little split happening here in the family. Let's have a look at Ivanka. Ivanka's testimony. <laughs> She'll probably come in and say, look, I'm adopted. I don't know anything. <laughs> Didn't you know I was adopted? Look, I'm blonde. Oh, it's not real blonde, but you know, I'm adopted. I'm not a Trump. I'm a Krishna now, remember? Let's just see. Ivanka. One card that summarizes her testimony. So, Ivanka. Uh, Preoccupied with material possessions and wanting things easy. Okay, I actually think that the wanting things easy is part of it actually i think both definitions are part of it but the wanting things easy is about you know wasn't me i wasn't there i you know i was doing a different thing i was an advisor to the president at the time i had removed myself you know my life my presence here is just to be a witness i want things a bit easier than the rest of them i wasn't really involved you know because i was younger or i was a girl or i was you know having children at the time or whatever trying to make it easier for herself the material possession element of this card, though, is exactly what Letitia James said when Ivanka was trying to avoid testifying. And that is, you are still um, benefiting financially from this organization and you're still relying on the organization to provide you with certain perks. And I think that's what this is. It's kind of like trying to have your cake and eat it too. Trying to get the good stuff, but also not wanting to really be involved. And that's basically what the definition of this card is. So she's going to be ducking and weaving and throwing everyone else under the bus. That's not even remotely surprising. So let's took it, take a look at Dad. So Donald. Oh, I can just imagine. And of course, it's beautiful. He comes last because the prosecutors will love this. They will have everybody else's testimony. And he's going to have to try and navigate through everybody else's testimony. What's what's Donald going to say after having heard, because he's probably going to be there to witness all the testimonies, I suppose. What's he going to say to be able to navigate through what his children have said? So just a single card representing Donald's testimony. So the Page of Wands. That's interesting. 
So this is about being a free agent, having no ties, being a messenger, having the world's potential, lots of possibilities for something new and um, looking at your I actually this free kind of like a freewheeling no ties I I actually think that he may end up lying so much on the stand that ultimately it doesn't even resemble reality because you see he's got he's got he's um, a free messenger with no ties it's almost like he's not there it's almost like he's not even there I'm going to put down one more card and see if it gives us a bit more context. Okay. <laughs> right. So in the Hierophant, this is a person who's obstructive, um, but there's also an expulsion element here, but they're basically refusing to adhere to the established, to the establishment. See this free wheeling, this kind of, um, so the messenger element, he might, he might just be throwing random things out there pretending that he like talking in fantasy language being obstructive refusing to answer he may end up pleading uh the fifth or ref refusing to answer on some strange thing like presidential privilege i mean who even knows but this he may not even show up i don't know there's something with when it comes to donald's testimony there's going to be something interesting that's happening where it's almost like he's not there he might be physically there or he may not be physically there but he's going off in an entirely different direction or he may not even show up which i think um he would be in contempt if he didn't show up but it looks as though it's going to be a mess not necessarily bad for the prosecutors but it's going to be pretty newsworthy okay <laughs> am i surprised not really <laughs> it's going to be mayhem this week and that's why i wanted to make sure i got this reading done so it looks as though um the trump uh, siblings are going to be initially pointing at each other ivanka is going to try and pretend that she was you know i don't know in an entirely different universe and had nothing to do with the Trump organization. She doesn't know anything about anything, but ultimately she's going to be throwing her siblings into the muck or running them over with a bus kind of thing or throwing them under the bus, I think is the term. And Don Jr. and Eric will be pointing the finger at each other. And then also Donald is going to, at the very end, sweep all this stuff, all this stuff up and turn it into something that doesn't actually make a lot of sense if he shows up because there's something there that would indicate that even if he is physically there he's not there so there'll be some it'll either be a no-show or a fantasy kind of testimony that doesn't make any sense or is so full of lies that it i think i think that he's probably just not going to fully cooperate in some way Oh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall of that one. Where's Mike Pence's fly when you need it? So that's it for this video. It should be a really interesting week. Thank you so much for watching. I love knowing you're here and I'll see you in my dreams.